Hello everyone and welcome to this week's behind the scenes devlog video and this week I'm going to be doing some more work on the new Aquilinox engine. I'm also going to be improving the entity control system that you saw in the last video and I'm also going to be making some new models for Aquilinox. So firstly, sorry for the lack of video last week. Um, I spent most of last week just ill in bed, which wasn't much fun. Um, I'm pretty much recovered now. You might still be able to hear, hear that my voice is a little bit off, but other than that, I'm pretty much fine. So I'm going to get back to work on Aquilinox this week, going to try and make up for some of the lost time last week, and I will show you what I'm doing later in the day. So the main thing that I'm going to be working on in the new engine this week is the batching system and the batching system allows uh, static entities in the world to be put together into these batches and then each of the batches can be rendered in a single draw call as opposed to having to render every single static entity in, in the world uh, with its own draw call which would end up being thousands and thousands of draw calls. So this just makes the whole rendering process a lot more efficient and that's all good and well but the problem is that the static entities in the world are constantly being added and removed and updated and so the batches need to also be updated constantly and this can be uh, quite inefficient when there are updates going on all the time. So the current batching system is fairly simple and uh, doesn't really optimize these updates as well as it could. So I'm going to be pretty much redoing the whole batching system. I want to plan it out from scratch and make sure that I can really optimize these updates by doing multiple updates at once when possible. Uh, and other things like that and uh, it should hopefully end up being a much better and much more optimized system. So for the whole morning today I've just been planning out the batching system which is going to be a pretty big complicated system so it does require quite a lot of planning before I can get started with the programming. So that's what I've been doing this morning but this afternoon I'm going to get back to work on the entity controlling system. Back to work on the entity controlling stuff this afternoon and the first thing that I've been working on is that when you now take control of an animal the camera will follow that animal around so you can see that when I move this sheep which I'm now in control of uh, the camera moves around with it and I can still rotate and zoom the camera in and out but the position is now fixed. Um, also one other little thing that I did this afternoon and that was to slightly update the model for the cherry tree because I thought that the top part looks a little bit too low poly in comparison to the rest of it. So I've slightly updated the model to try and make it look a little bit nicer. So for the rest of the afternoon today I've been doing something uh, which I probably shouldn't have been doing because I did say last week it's a little bit pointless until I've redone the engine but I just wanted to see how it looks. So as you can see I have been implementing a day night cycle. So at the moment it's well it's just coming up to morning so if I speed up the time you can see that the sun changes position so all the shadows are moving around uh, you can see that the sunlight has a different tint to it at different times of the day. So right now in the morning everything has a slightly pinkish tint to it. And if I speed it up you can see all the shadows moving around as it comes to midday. And then slowly turns into the afternoon. You can see the shadows getting a bit longer. Everything now has a kind of orangey tint to it. So a bit pointless but I just wanted to see how everything would look. Uh, just give me a few ideas for when I actually implement the day-night cycle and it does look pretty cool, it makes it does make the world seem a bit more dynamic. So this morning I've been working on various different things and planning out a lot of stuff. So first up I redid the equations that I was using for the movement of the sun just to try and make that a bit more realistic and that's all looking nice now. Um, then I did a lot of reading about the best way of storing data in VBOs and how you can make it more efficient and it's probably stuff I should have known before but at least I know it now and basically up until now I'd been using 40 bytes of data to store each vertex of a model and I realized that if I used these packed normalized ints I could actually get that down to 20 bytes per vertex which would obviously halve the amount of data needed to store each model which would be great and then I've also just been planning out uh, another way of making the batching system even more complicated, which is lovely. And um, basically in the current system, the world is split evenly into chunks. And then I have one batch to render each chunk. Um, but that can be quite inefficient, especially when you start a new game and you've just started a new world. You're probably just going to be working in one area and adding lots of objects to one area of the world. And that will lead to a lot of the world being pretty sparsely populated and then some areas of the world being much more densely populated. 
So you can see in this example here that a lot of the chunks have zero or one object in them and then some chunks are overpopulated. So that's not very good at all. So I thought a better way of doing it would be to use quad trees. So you start off with really big chunks and then as they fill up, whenever they go over, or in this example, four objects, they split into four smaller chunks. Um, so you end up with more chunks in the more densely populated areas of the world and less chunks in the sparsely populated areas of the world. And it just ends up with the batches being used more optimally. It is 8 o'clock on Thursday morning, I'm just having a bit of breakfast before I get started for today and yesterday afternoon was a bit of a disaster, I didn't really get anything done which was partly because I wasn't feeling too great but mostly just because laziness so that was really bad and so today I really need to knuckle down and get a lot of work done. So first up today I'm going to be working on this UI that appears when you start controlling an entity and I'm going to have two tabs here at the top one tab is going to allow you to see the stats for the current entity that you've got controlled and the other tab is going to show you the controls for the current entity. Um, and also you can see that already today I've changed the exit button which used to be across at the top here and I've made it into a cancel button down at the bottom here. So when you click on cancel you now no longer are controlling the entity. It is coming up to 12 o'clock now and as you can see I've been making some good progress with the controlling GUI so it does now display all of the entity's stats and I've also added a couple of options up at the top here so the tabs don't actually work yet but as I said earlier this will allow you to switch between the stats and the controls for this entity and I also added the info button up at the top so that you can click on that and see the general information about that species in case you need to know what kind of food it eats or which areas it prefers and stuff like that. Just finishing off for the morning now and as you can see the tabs are now working although obviously I have to actually implement the controls tab which I'll do after lunch. Um, but I've also just been thinking about a few changes that I'm going to make to the world once the new engine is up and running and one of the things that I'm going to change is that I'm going to increase the size of the world and I'm going to make it about four times larger than it currently is uh, so you'll have plenty of space to create your world and one thing that I've been wondering about and I thought I'd ask you guys what you think is the edges of the world, how exactly the, the world should end. So one option would be what I've currently got where the world just kind of disintegrates out into nothing. Another option would be what I had in the older versions of Equinox where the world fades out into nothing. And then the third option that I've been thinking about is slightly more ambitious and that is to have the world as a big square floating island, uh, something like this where it has rocks and stuff underneath. So let me know what you guys think, um, but now I'm going to make some lunch and today I'm actually going to try and make my own hummus. Back to work this afternoon now after a very disappointing lunch. The hummus was way too strong in terms of raw garlic and raw onion. Not really sure why I put so much in there. Um, but anyway, uh, this afternoon I've been working on allowing entity components to provide behavior that can be controlled by the user when the user is controlling an animal. So in the entity class, you can see that I've added this method to get all of the possible controllable behavior for that entity. And to do that, it simply loops through all of the entity's components and each component can now provide behavior that can be controlled and controllable behavior just has a name and also a keyboard key that needs to be pressed in order to activate that behavior and then obviously this abstract do action method is the method that gets called when the behavior should be carried out. So for example in this random sounder component which is the component that the sheep use to make their sheep noises from time to time you can see that I've created a behavior that can be controlled and the behavior is called make noise and to activate this behavior you just have to press the E key and when the behavior is activated it simply plays a random sound from the available sheep sounds. So if I now try this out in the game and I take control of a sheep um, whenever I press the E key the sheep will make a sheep noise so as you can hear Whenever I press the E key, the sheep carries out a sheep sound. It is five o'clock now and I've just been working on the controls tab 
Uh, so you can see that that now shows you the controls that you need uh, to control your entity. Um, I still haven't made an icon for this tab yet, but as you can see, everything else is working. And as you can see, it also shows the controls for those extra behaviors provided by the entity components, such as the make noise component, which as you saw was provided by the random sounds component. So I've just finished creating the new icon for the controls tab, as you can see here. And I also just had to fix a bug where the controls UI wasn't opening if the inventory was already open, uh, but you can see that that is now fixed. So to finish off the day, I've just been doing a bit of work on the next animation tutorial, which is going to be out next week, unfortunately. I did want to get it out this weekend, uh, but then obviously I lost a whole week because I was ill, so everything on my schedule got pushed back a bit. But I'm just about to stop and have some dinner now, and then after that I'll probably just answer a few comments and emails and then get an early night. Uh, but yeah, it's been a pretty good day. Uh, I got a lot more done than yesterday, so that was definitely good. So the plan today is to work on entities that can create other entities in the world, such as a fruit tree which creates fruit, and then the fruit can actually fall off the tree as its own entity and then move around in the world. Obviously, it's not going to move around much, uh, but it will fall off the tree, maybe roll along the terrain and then can be eaten by some animals. Or, for example, birds that create a nest entity or bees create a hive entity and things like that. It is half past ten now, and as you can see, I've just been creating all the different model stages for the apple tree, which I'm going to add into the game now, and then I'll get to work on implementing the entities creating other entities thing. Just finished adding the apple tree into Aquilinox, as you can see, and it's looking pretty nice. So now I'm going to get started with implementing fruits that can actually fall off the tree. Just stopping for a bit of lunch now, and I actually managed to find a use for the leftover hummus from yesterday. Um, I added some flour to it and fried it up, and it turned into this kind of flaffle-like thing, which actually tastes pretty okay-ish. So this afternoon I'm just working on the fruit producing functionality, and so far I've just implemented a fruit fall component, which I've added to the apple tree, and this can spawn an apple entity uh, from time to time. And I've also been working on the apple entity, which has a food component so that it can be eaten and it's also going to have a decay component so that it gets removed from the world after a certain amount of time otherwise the world would just fill up with uneaten fruit and it's also going to have a fall component which is going to handle the initial physics of falling from the tree um, but I haven't implemented the fall component or the decay component yet and that's what I'm going to be working on now. As you can see, the apple trees are now spawning apples around them, and at the moment they're just spawning the apples directly onto the ground, but the next thing that I'm going to work on is having the apples actually fall from the trees. And you can also see that the apples disappear after a certain amount of time because of the decay components that I added to them. So that's all working pretty nicely now. I'm going to stop for a bit, have some dinner, and then later this evening I might do a bit more, or I might do a bit of editing for this week's devlog video. So it is now Saturday and so far today I've just been editing together this video but I did also get the chance to finish off the falling physics for the apples from the apple tree and as you can see here that is now all working nicely except of course for the number of apples which is obviously just not high enough there obviously need to be way more apples um, but yeah that's going to be it for this week thank you guys very much for watching this video do subscribe if you haven't already have a wonderful week and I will see you all next time.